Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. It feels like I have done endless previews over the last couple of weeks, and in many ways I have, but I promise this will be the final one for now and possibly the most important. IndyCar is one of the most exciting race series in the world. The action is close, results unpredictable, and the quality of drivers is exceptionally high. A great calendar and brilliant tracks mean there's very little chance an IndyCar race will be boring. With that in mind, let's go through every driver and team competing in 2024 with some big shakeups to the grid. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and let's jump straight into the video. Able Motorsport. Yes, Able Motorsport are running an entry for RC Ennison in the Indy 500 again. He finished 32nd last year. He'll finish down the back somewhere again this year. When does Jacob Abel get a turn at this? AJ Foyt Racing. When Santino Ferrucci finished third in the Indy 500 last year, that was AJ Foyt's first podium since Tony Kanaan in 2019. They haven't won a race for 11 years when Takoma Sato won in 2013, and that was their first win in 11 years. So they are due a win in 2024, despite having only done it once in 21 years. Ferrucci didn't finish in the top 10 except at the Indy 500, so expect more of that. Benjamin Pedersen has been replaced despite winning the Rookie of the Year at the Indy 500. Stingray Rob comes in instead, who debuted last year and didn't get close to the top 10. Foy are one of the smaller teams in the series and they do their best. But these two aren't looking for titles, just good points is a good year for Foyt drivers these days. Andretti. Some chopping and changing at Andretti, the disappointing Roman Grosjean and the truly awful Devlin Di Francesco are gone for 2024. Colton Herta remains, but given the last couple of years, have been dreadful by his standards. I wonder how much longer he'll put up with it. More wins, a championship push. These are things Herta desperately needs. Kyle Kirkwood returns also, and he was a real standout last year. He took his first two wins and was only just behind Herta in the final standings. They were Andretti's only 2023 wins. Joining the Giro is Marcus Ericsson. He's finished sixth overall for the last three years in a row and will be looking to break the top five with Andretti. Marco Andretti will be appearing at the Indy 500. The 2020 pole sitter hasn't finished in the top 10 of the Indy 500 since 2017. Arrows McLaren. David Malukas joins McLaren but is currently injured and will miss the opening race at St. Petersburg and the $1 million race. Therefore, a replacement was needed and Callum Eilot will step up. Eilot wasn't great in IndyCar and seems to be focusing in the World Endurance Championship this year. Maybe he'll be back one day. As for David Malukas, he's still young but deserves this step up. He's taken a couple of podiums but should really come good this year. I'm predicting a first Malukas win. Alexander Rossi is consistent if nothing else. His finishing position over the last four years are 9th, 9th, 10th and 9th again. If he really pushes himself, he might finish 8th. Pato O'Ward is de facto team leader now and McLaren clearly value him. He's usually consistent but needs to win more. He's only ever won four IndyCar races and it does feel like the one thing stopping him from winning a championship. NASCAR champion Carl Larson is doing the Indy 500 and it'll be interesting to see if he actually qualifies. Chip Ganassi Racing Five cars at every round for Chip Ganassi and whilst they have three young drivers, they also have eight IndyCar champions between two of their drivers. Scott Dixon is still in his prime, even over 20 years since his IndyCar debut. He's always there or thereabout come year's end and he only finished Lerven 7th once last year. Alex Palau meanwhile didn't finish Lerven 8th at all. The pair got 8 wins between them last year as they took 1st and 2nd in the championship and they are amongst the favourites in 2024. Marcus Armstrong only did the road circus in 2023. In 2024, the Kiwi will be taking part in every race, and he was alright in his debut season, but needs to improve. Kiffin Simpson has won endurance titles already in his young career. He's been part of Chip Ganassi as a test driver for a couple of years, and the 19-year-old is stepping up full-time in 2024. Finally, Swedish driver Linus Lundqvist was 2022 Indy Lights champion and made a few appearances for Maya Shank at the end of last year. This is our first real look at him in IndyCar. Dale Coyne. Strangely, the Dale Coyne and Dale Coyne with Rick Rare Racing Team may not have a full-time entry between them in 2024. That might change, but for now, Jack Harvey will be racing for the majority of the season, but give up his seat to Indy NXT star Nolan Siegel at selected rounds. A really harsh hit for Harvey, who has been impressive at times. Successful sports car racer Colin Braun will make his debut, but is only in for a couple of races right now. He's raced just about everything else in America, so he might as well give IndyCar a try. Who's taking his seat for the rest of the season? No idea. Possibly Harvey or Siegel? I guess when they can. 
Probably Connor Daly because he turns up a lot. Maybe someone else entirely. Dryer and Rainbow Racing, Kuzik Motorsports. Talking of Connor Daly, he's penciled in for the Indy 500 with Dreyer and Rainbold alongside Ryan Hunter Ray. It's been 10 years since Hunter Ray won the 500, whilst Connor Daly has had his best attempts over the last couple of years. Ed Carpenter Racing. As usual, Ed Carpenter is racing for his own team and taking drives away from last year's Indy NXT champion, Christian Rasmussen. Carpenter will be doing five races towards the end of the year, whilst Rasmussen is yet another Danish driver to come through to IndyCar over the last few years. He's a great young driver and will do big things in the future. Renus VK is in the other car. The Dutchman is about to start his fifth season with Ed Carpenter, a former race winner, but 2023 was his worst season in IndyCar and he'll be on the lookout for better results. Junkos Hollinger Racing. Roman Grosjean's time in IndyCar has been disappointing. He threw away wins from winning positions in 2023 and crashed a lot. He's been shuffled out of Andretti and joins Junkos Hollinger for 2024. Maybe still looking for his first win and podiums will almost certainly come his way, but he has made little progress in his three seasons of IndyCar and it's likely it will stay that way. Augustin Canapino was a big shock for me last year. I didn't expect very much from him and he put in some very sensible drives to score points and finished second in the rookie standings. He didn't finish in the top 10 last year and maybe that will be the target in 2024. Maya Shank Racing. Felix Rosenquist moves over from Arrows McLaren and he is a good driver on his day, but he has a lot of bad luck and just hasn't got the results in IndyCar that his junior form promised. Two-time Macau winner and Formula 3 European champion with wins in Formula E and indeed IndyCar. I was expecting a lot more from the Swede. Tom Blomquist has only done a few races in IndyCar and so comes into his rookie season just looking to score some points and survive. Helio Castroneves will be racing at the Indy 500, looking for his fifth win at the young age of 48. Rahal Letterman Lanigan Racing. Not much has changed for Rahal Letterman Lanigan Racing. Christian Lundgaard is one of the brightest talents in the field and 2023 was a real breakout year for him. He took his first win at Toronto and finished the season inside the top 10 and the highest placed runner for Rahal Racing. Beating his teammate Graham Rahal, a usually very consistent driver who still hasn't won a race for nearly seven years now. It wasn't a great year for him last time round and he'll be looking for more consistent performances throughout the year. 15th overall last year was his worst year for a decade. A famous name returning to IndyCar is the Fittipaldi name. Pietro Fittipaldi has done a few races previously with Dale Coyne and now joins Rahal Letterman for his first full attempt at IndyCar. Former Indy 500 winner Takuma Sato will return for that race and will be looking to win his third Indy 500, which would be incredible. Team Penske. And finally, we have Team Penske with the usual three lining up for the team. Honestly, not much needs to be said about this team. Joseph Newgarden finally won the Indy 500 last year and the two-time champion is always a threat. I guarantee he'll be near the top in the final standings. Will Power has also won two championships and an Indy 500, but has a few more wins to his name. I find Will Power is less consistent over the course of a season. 2023 was the first time he failed to win a race in an IndyCar season his first winless year since 2006. Maybe that will motivate him or maybe this is the start of a long drought. Scott McLaughlin, he's one of my favourite drivers and he has proven himself to be a top driver able to compete at this level. He started a wave of V8 supercar drivers racing in America. Third in the championship last year, taking four wins in total. I'd love to see Scott McLaughlin as a champion. He has the talent, but can he put it all together? So they are all the teams and drivers competing in the IndyCar series in 2024. So time to pick the champion and the Indy 500 winner, of course. So many great drivers, this is a really open championship. Could Alex Palau take a third title or will Scott Dixon take a seventh? Joseph Newgarden, Will Power, so many others just can't be counted out. But for champion, I'm going for Pato O'Ward. I just think this McLaren IndyCar project has got to come good at some point and maybe 2024 will be the year. I do think Alex Palau will win the Indy 500 though. I normally pick New Garden, but seeing as he won it last year, I'll start picking someone else for the winner until they actually do year on year. So let me know your thoughts and predictions down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching and have a good one.